pharaohs, having these weirdly elongated skulls. This includes Akhenaten, Nefertiti, and their daughter Meritaten. In the case of Meritaten, there are multiple granite busts that you can see that were carved of her, in which she clearly has no hair and has this freakishly elongated skull. Remember, this is a culture that was apparently building pyramids at the time that these sculptures were made. The people with the elongated skulls had apparently been keeping their lineage secret and hidden in the Egyptian priesthood. But then remember that Egypt became weak and it was conquered by Rome. What happened when the Romans got in there is that they made a secret agreement with these people in the Egyptian priesthood who still had the elongated skulls. And they created a safe haven for them in the Vatican City. The Library of Alexandria was burned down, but only with a false flag where they burned tax documents and census documents. They took all the good stuff that included books from before they came to Earth and relocated that to the Vatican Library. Then you go across to the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, and once again you have a pyramid-building culture in Mesoamerica with people depicted in their inscriptions who have elongated skulls. And unlike the case of Egypt, with Mesoamerica, we now have the added benefit that there are multiple elongated skulls that have been dug up and were not censored, but are actually on display in museums in places like Bolivia. We have the researcher Brian Forster, who is bringing out new examples of elongated skulls, and they are being genetically tested, they're being analyzed, and they have clear physiological differences from the skulls that the rest of us have. These people have very large brains. Discover Magazine, in the year 2009, came out with an article called What Happened to the Hominids Who Were Smarter Than Us? And it describes how in the early 20th century, elongated skulls were found in Boskop, South Africa, thus earning them the name Boskop Skulls. And they were given ceremonial burials. Apparently these people were revered in their society. But the article claims that the brain volume is almost twice what ours would be, and thus the average person in their society would have an IQ of 150, and some of them could have an IQ that goes up to 300. These weird elongated skulls were also found in a dig in Siberia in a town called Omsk, and the men who dug them up were so afraid that many of them actually started crying and left their jobs and refused to come back. We furthermore see in the case of the Mongolian conquerors that there were reports of them having weird elongated skulls. And most recently, even in Europe, we have found tombs of the nobility, the wealthy people who preserve their bloodlines, such as in France. And they also have this bizarre elongated skull feature. It wasn't until insiders started talking to me that I thought about the fact that in the Vatican, you see people wearing these miter hats, and those hats would very nicely Holders. conceal an elongated skull. These people with elongated skulls would look like us in their faces, and the hat would conceal the only thing that would make them appear to be different. My research also turned up data on an Italian noble family from the 14th century known as the Diest clan, and the DS clan had very close ties to the Vatican. What's so bizarre is when you look at a painting of Prince Leonello Diest and someone who is either his sister or his wife, the scholars don't really know, they usually call her Princess Diest, they both have freakishly elongated skulls in this painting. The story gets even more interesting when you trace the descendants of the DS clan, the lineage that they left behind. For what you find is that King George I, who began ruling in 1714, was a direct bloodline descendant of these people who obviously had the elongated skulls in the 1400s. And then you find out that a variety of earlier British consorts, meaning nobility, 
also were direct descendants of the DS clan. Then it gets even more outrageous when you discover that the royal families of Norway, Sweden, Spain, and Denmark are all descendants of the same elongated skull DS clan. And let's not forget that only recently we found royal tombs in France and other countries in Europe in which the nobility again had these elongated skulls. And if you think this only has to do with divine right of kings and European nobility, you would be wrong. In 1988, an article in the New York Times traced fully 13 out of all of the 40 U.S. presidents at the time as having a direct bloodline connection to European nobility. In 2012, a 12-year-old girl named Bridget d'Avignon actually did a much more complex genealogical study of the U.S. presidents using the power of the internet and computers. And On the school watch tonight, the story of a seventh grader from Salinas who claims to have made a major discovery about President Obama. She and her grandfather say that President Obama is related to all but one U.S. president. And she found that 42 out of 43 U.S. presidents all had a common ancestor in King John I from England. And this is not just any old king, this is the guy who actually chartered the Magna Carta, which became the defining element that turned into the British Constitution. Davigno says she spent countless hours on the internet over the summer researching the lineage of our presidents, a project that started with her trying to trace her own family tree. But I'm the first historian to do all the presidents. So that's almost all of the U.S. presidents that we've ever had. The bottom line is these people are tracking their lineage, they're tracking their bloodline, and they're making sure that their own people get steered into the positions of the highest power and influence worldwide, including the United States of America. Within secret societies, there can be both good and bad people, white hats and black hats. So many of these secret societies are, of course, involved in very dark practices. But there are also secret societies out there that are harboring knowledge and information and technology to keep it out of the hands of the deep state or the black hats or the people that would do detriment with these technologies. Some of the, I guess, very well-known elites, uh, names I won't mention, but uh, are on the front loads of most watching this video, are highly involved not only in some of the slave trade aspects, but are also involved in dealing with non-terrestrials and mm -hmm. dealing with uh, organized crime down here on Earth and how it's related to these programs. I will tell you, Director Deutsch, as a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, that the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. Director Deutsch, I will refer you to three specific agency operations known as Amadeus, Pegasus, and Watchtower. I have Watchtower documents heavily redacted by the agency. I was personally exposed to CIA operations and recruited by CIA personnel who attempted to recruit me in the late 70s to become involved in protecting agency drug operations in this country. For the record, my name is Mike Rupert, R-U-P-P-E-R-T. I did bring this information out 18 years ago, and I got shot at and forced out of LAPD because of it. I've been on the record for 18 years nonstop, and I'll be happy to give you, Congressman, anything that I have. Uh, a lot of these elites are running a lot of financial uh, scams, drug uh, uh, programs to raise money for uh, these, these secret programs that they have going on. And they take full advantage of this access. They probably don't age anymore. You know, a one percenter, you don't know who they are. You don't even know what they look like. You don't even know their name. They could go down and be at a 7-Eleven, you wouldn't even know it. So they could not age, and you wouldn't know it. Never get sick. Um, offsprings would be born. They'd be super smart, super strong. Just quality of life improved in every direction. And uh, I'm, I'm sure the one percenters are enjoying that. While the rest of us are dying with diseases and, and malformities and stuff, they're walking around, you know, body beautiful. So that's that's just the medical area. Then and think about the other thing, transportation. Um, the vehicles they travel around, uh, home, security, all this stuff. Just, you know, it'd be like somebody in modern sub suburbia looking at a man in a cave. We're the men in the cave. What very often occurs is that an elite will get to a very old, ripe age, or they will, and die, or they will die in some sort of an accident, publicly. Privately, they are taken, and depending on their level, they are either age regressed, or they have their consciousness basically downloaded into uh, a clone that is an exact, an exact duplicate of them. They then disappear from uh, the public eye forever and go into these programs or go into retirement. This is something that uh, pops up a lot in the programs, and everyone that is served deeply knows that the elite have access, and many of them never really die. What the deep state or the cabal or the new world order is, is a small group of very powerful but very psychopathic individuals that have acquired a lot of money, a lot of technology, and a lot of information over the course of centuries. Definitely your politicians, the older ones, one that are chair people command the power, um, one percenters, chairman of the boards, that, those people, that's they, that's ones we never know their names, don't know their faces, and they control all the power. The more you get involved in these societies, the deeper and deeper you go, the more compromised you become. You start to learn more and more of the secret teachings, you have to work really hard for the knowledge, it can take years of time, you keep accessing higher and higher levels of rank, and they keep dropping these little seeds in as you go on, seeds that start to blossom in your mind and make you think differently. Ultimately, if you go far enough down this road, you will be invited to participate in things like pedophilia and human sacrifice. And if you don't do it, it's the offer you can't refuse. They may actually even kill you. 
once you partake in these activities, whether you like them or not, they now have leverage they can use against you. If you ever dare to speak out against this group, they have photographs, they have films, they have the footage that can absolutely ruin your life. Deze mensen, de meeste daarvan, hadden een Luciferiaans geloof. En dan kan iedereen zeggen, ja, geloof bestaat niet, God bestaat niet, alles bestaat niet. Nou, voor die mensen was het de waarheid en de werkelijkheid. Hun diende dus iets onstoffelijks. Hun diende wat zij noemden Lucifer. En ik kwam dus ook in die kringen. Alleen ik lachte erom, want het waren voor mij gewoon klanten. Dus ik kwam in wat ze noemden Satanskerken. Ik kan zeggen, dit, we hebben het nu over het satanisme. Ja, oké. Okay. Ik kwam dus in Satanskerken, maar ik kwam zeg maar, op route even langs, even buurten. En daar was dan op dat moment een heilige mis, een heilige soort mis. En dat was met blote vrouwen en wat drank en dit en dat. En ik vond het alleen maar leuk. Ik hechtte weinig of geen geloof aan hun geloof. Of ik was er eigenlijk niet eens van overtuigd dat het überhaupt allemaal wel bestond. Het was meer een schouwspel voor jou? Ja, ik, ik zag gewoon de donkerte en de slechtheid en de diepte daarvan zit in de mens zelf. Ja. Ik koppelde het nog niet zo. Maar ook die kringen verkeerde ik dus in, omdat dat, ja, als gast zeg maar, eh, omdat ik vond het allemaal wel leuk. Al die blote vrouwen en al, al die dingetjes die daar gespeelden, eh, het was het vrije leven. Uh, maar er kwam een moment, toen werd ik dus uitgenodigd, daarom vertel ik dit ook, om mee te gaan doen aan offers in het buitenland. 